as we go to the legs of the man in yellow, I would suspect, as we gradually creep up them. There he is. As we're seeing now here, TJ Van Garden holding his cadence here, a little way back down the road from Goodell Evans. I just think it's quite amazing when you look at the, the five or six names that we've uh, continued to mention here, you can't really pick a winner out of those six bike riders. This race here could really go right down to the final stage around the streets of Denver. Leipheimer wears the green colours here of the uh, Smashburger Points Championship because he has had yellow, he's gone back into green now. Uh, not his usual red radio shack colours. Now Cadell Evans goes into the corridor of noise again, stamps on those pedals. The motorcycle ahead clears the way for the champion of the Tour de France. His time is running and he's 25 and it's already gone by, Paul, the time of Infantino. So Evans isn't going to be best time by quite a way. Well, he's obviously found this uh, individual time trial very difficult and very testing here this afternoon. That's an incredible ride by Rafael Infantino, and I wonder if anybody's actually going to challenge it at all now, because if Cadell Evans can't do it, you have to question whether or not <laughs> Levi Leipheimer and TJ Van Garderen can. Well, the Australian frag almost blinded Cadell there, but he's got past it into the home straight now and into the barriered region. As the Danish flag flies as well, this is not going to be a winning time. It's going to put him maybe in the top six if he can kick. He's going to have to really kick for the line. He has lifted his pace up here as he gets in around 26.40 on the line. Cadell Evans will have a high position. It's now what the rest do as he crosses that line in fifth best time. Well, Cadell suffered for that one, certainly looked extremely powerful when he came up towards the finishing line, and now he's just got to try and uh, recuperate if he can. All of these riders uh, will try and get back to the hotel as quickly as possible for rest and recuperation before they come out and do the same thing all over again tomorrow. Yes, indeed, but first of all, you better hang out here and see what's going on as we switch back down. Just coming up to that uh, one-kilometre banner again is Levi Leipheimer. Uh, the way up towards the finish here has really hurt these riders. He did it to Basso. It looks as though he's done it to Evans. Now, how is Levi Leipheimer coping with this? But remember, and here he is, the arrival now of Christian van der Velde. Well, Christian van der Velde was posting some pretty impressive rides out on the court. And look at this time, Phil. We're inside of 26 minutes. We could well be inside the best time of 25.51. This is huge now. 25.51 is the best time. And there's the banner. This is the best time. Van der Velde has delivered today. And he's got the course record 25 of 47 best time 25 48 is the outright best time ever done by ben day so he's beaten that by fractions of a second but who cares the most important thing is he's delivered when it matters for the overall classification I'll tell you what phil that was a man who pulled himself inside out for that ride look at his face again he's grimacing here he's trying to hold back the pain barrier just that little bit longer thrusts his bike at the finishing line and stops the clock with a brand new best time and now there are only four men left out on course and he's put 58 seconds into Cadell Evans which has really moved him much more into the lead there that is a significant ride uh, by Christian van der Velde who has got better and better as this year has got longer and longer there he is chance to warm down now and wait and see don't go to the massage table this time because you could be on the winner's podium I think he's going to have to wait around for a little while now. The next man to come into the finish line uh, is going to be Levi Leipheimer, fourth rider from the end. Uh, he is looking to ride himself up into a, a year leader's yellow jersey at the end of the day if he can. Richmond 2015, that's Richmond, Virginia. And what they're hoping is that world championships, uh, the international world championships, will come to Richmond, Virginia in 2015. Well, why not? Because America has showed how it welcomes the big names in this world of cycling, Colorado in particular. Why have we waited so long to bring a bike race back to this beautiful state? Uh, because it's back now and it's back big time. Yeah, but uh, look at this time again, Phil. This is uh, just over the 25-minute mark here for Levi Leipheimer. He's got to try and beat the time of uh, Christian van der Velde. It's going to be very, very close. It is going to be. Look at the face. 25-47 at 25-23. Leipheimer could be delivering here. He's going to have to really sprint around that corner, but he might well do it. We're looking at 25-47. Leipheimer is back on top of his game here. The clock is counting. He's seen it. He's digging deep, and he hits the line. The official time, 20 
75-47. He's in the same second, the same whole second as Van der Velde. He's in by hundreds of a second better. That is unbelievable to stop well, the clock in exactly the same time. I tell you what, Levi Leipheimer really tried hard now. Three men left. Tommy Danielson, George Hincapie, and TJ Van Garden. Look at his face here as he comes up to the line. He looks and he lunges for the line. It's exactly the same time as Christian Van der Velde. What an well, unbelievable individual time trial. We ride a time trial. The two guys gain absolutely nothing on one another. And I think marginally, by hundreds of a second, they might put Leipheimer on top of the podium. We've still got three very good time trialists to finish. So don't, uh, uh, don't count your chickens just yet, Levi. But it looks as though he's delivered a ride today. Boy, after all that climbing pull, you get a blink of the eyelid and you lose the race. It's totally crazy, and I think that's what this whole this race is all about here, Phil. When we went down to the starting gate just before, there was an incredible electric atmosphere, and it's continuing right down to the last three riders. We just have the three riders to go now. Tommy Danielson will be the next rider to start. Remember, they started two minutes apart. Van der Velde and Leipheimer finished two minutes apart. It is quite unbelievable, that. But we wait for Tommy D as we concentrate a little bit on the last man sweeping here now. TJ Van Garden. He might know the time's being done by Van der Velde and Leipheimer from the team car. Out on course there, Frankie Andreu on the right, himself a great Tour de France rider, interviewing here. Christian uh, van der Velde and the next interview will be this man here. We'll have to wait for the official uh, clocks to tell us uh, just who has got the best time on the stage, but it looks to me as though they're locked in the same whole second. And in cycling, by the way, we go to the next whole second. Only in the event of a tie, finally in Denver, would they look at the time trial time. Just looking at the style here, Phil, of uh, TJ Van Garder, and he seems to be struggling a little bit uh, with that gear. We've got a... We've got, uh well, they're giving a second difference between Levi Leipheimer and well, Christian Van der Velde, and he's looking at the clock and he says, I don't believe this. Well, he can't believe it, but we'll have to watch how they've worked that out because it must mean that uh, Van der Velde's in 25.48. Tommy D is coming home now as soon as we get the clock, but it's already gone by. So Tommy Danielson still on the chance here of possibly a fourth-place situation. No, it slipped away a little bit. Tommy D, though, has had a good day out. He's not conceded too much here. As he races up towards the line, he stops the clock and stops our picture, so I can't tell you what we stopped the clock at, as Tommy D has gone over the line there, so we'll get his time very shortly. At the moment, it is 25.47 to Leipheimer at one second, Christian van der Velde. Only two more bike riders left in this race uh, out on course. George Hincapie will be next up, up to the line and TJ Van Garden. I keep looking, Phil, at TJ Van Garden's style here. He seems to be having a hard time getting his uh, legs over the top of that gear. He seems to be struggling a fraction to keep the tempo nice and high, but he is the man who wears the yellow jersey. He will do his utmost here, but when you see that body style, when you see that rocking of the top half of the body, it means the guy's losing a little bit of his power. Yeah, and it, the pressure's on him, don't forget. The pressure's really on him to defend this yellow jersey. He's got a little bit of time in the bank. He can afford to lose 15 seconds to George Hincapie, 22 to Tommy Danielson, 34 to Leipheimer. Uh, let's have a look here. Now, this is Leipheimer. <laughs> He's actually indicating, did I win or not? Well, he has uh, absolutely no idea because when he looked at the clock, he knew the time to beat, but uh, he then knew that it was going to go down to hundreds of seconds, and now he's got a few moments to wait to figure out whether or not he's won this stage and whether or not he's going to do enough to get himself back the overall leader's jersey. Well, there's no doubt about one thing. He's first or he's second, and we believe he is now first. And uh, that is a tremendous time right trial by Leipheimer. One kilometre to go. Final visit to the Maxi Maxis banner here now is TJ Van Garderen. He still can't confirm Tommy Danielson's time, but it won't affect the leaderboard today. Uh, because he slipped away towards the end, but can this man do it? Can he hold on to his yellow jersey? I'm going to start writing some times down here, Paul. You carry on commentating. <laughs> no, Van Garderen there. You can just see that he's really powering there, trying to keep that gear ticking over at the top. He'll be looking at the, the monitor in the front of his screen there to try and see what his average speed is, his heart rate. He probably just thrown that out the window right now. His heart rate would be up around 180, 185 beats a minute. He's uh, inside of the final kilometre, and he uh, has not seen... George Hincapie at all. George Hincapie also cannot be too far away from coming into the finishing straight. But for TJ Van Garden, yes, he started the day with an advantage over everybody else. But you know, an individual time trial like this uphill is a pain.
Wes, and he's got to finish at 26.21 is what TJ must be in at as we go up to the summit now to see the arrival of George Hincapie. Hincapie is looking to beat TJ by 16 seconds today to claim yellow, or has Leipheimer done something very, very special? Not a great ride by George. He suffered a bit up this climb, 26.50 and going on as he comes over the line, 26.58 for George Hincapie. Well, that's a top 10 finish for George Hincapie. He obviously struggled a little bit with that climb here this afternoon, so only one man left now, and it's this man, TJ Van Garderen. What it means, Leipheimer right now is in yellow if TJ Van Garderen doesn't record 26-21. I think Leipheimer will be back in the leader's yellow jersey. Yeah, I'm telling you, Phil, you look at the shape and uh, look at the style of this guy's pedalling action here. He, he just can't get the power this afternoon. After an incredible race yesterday over the top of Independence Pass, then all the way down into the, into the city of Aspen. And now he's having to defend it, but he really is suffering. Let's not forget, though, Phil, he's only 23 years of age. He only turned 23 about a week ago, and that was in the Tour of Utah. He's got a long career ahead of him. And you get a little bit more strength the longer you become a professional bike rider. Well, the young whippersnappers dumped Levi Leipheimer on Independence Pass yesterday, but it looks to me as though Levi Leipheimer may have turned the tables today here in Vail. 26-21. If he's not in by 26-21, Levi Leipheimer will lead the race tonight. And he's 26-03-04 and counting. He's not going to do it. I don't think he's going to do it either, Phil. He's uh, got inside now the last uh, 250 meters he knows what he has to do he's fighting all the way up to the finishing line though the time is going to go by very shortly it's going to be quite close though it's going to be the race goes on that's what it means he may be out of yellow but he could be back in yellow tomorrow this race has closed right up out of yellow goes tj by my reckoning in comes levi but we are talking about 10 seconds if that well instead of opening the race gaps what this time trial today has done phil is closed down the race <laughs> gaps we're going to have a very tight top end of the the overall standings at the end of today now they explained it to Levi he's certainly changed into his team strip down there so he's getting ready perhaps to change into a yellow jersey now the, the presentation won't be done up here by the way it's a quick whip back down to Vale in the cars for these riders uh, we'll catch up with them on the winners podium he's given his all Paul that is all you can do no, certainly. I, you know, let, let's not forget that he's only been a professional for a couple of seasons and he's got a long and uh, going to have an illustrious career ahead of him. It's yeah. tough when you're 23 years of age. You're defending the weight of a bike race like this. And this is an extremely important professional bike race, the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. He had all of that weight on his shoulders. And yeah. sometimes they say the yellow jersey can give you wings. Sometimes it's like a lead balloon. Champions can't take defeat because they're champions. That's why he's only lost by a hatful of seconds, and he certainly hasn't lost the race at this stage. Don't you worry, this boy's going to come out uh, boxing again tomorrow because we've got another good stage as we head uh, once again deep into the mountains. It's just got the information, I think, Phil, and uh, he's learned that he's lost the overall lead. Well, and I think Levi's just been told he's got the overall lead here. He's also, let's not forget, won the stage here. That's Axel Merck, son of the great Eddie, congratulating him. Axel Merck's here is the acting race director on Radio Shack, and he's handling the race leader once again. Yeah, he also looks after the Livestrong under-23 development team uh, which is starting to produce some uh, pretty impressive bike riders yeah and uh, Axel I think is doing a phenomenal job of bringing on American cycling Axel there also congratulating the team director there Alain Gallopin well okay we're looking at the face of a champion because he can't take defeat and that makes him a champion in my book he's gonna fight again he's given it all today he's briefly held the race lead as he briefly held the King of the Mountains jersey in the Tour de France uh, but he's only 23 years of age. Give his body a chance to get the stamina of this man, Levi Leipheimer. Yeah, well, don't forget, Levi Leipheimer's been around for an awful long time. Uh, TJ is on the start of his uh, climbing the ladder to success. And he, uh, I think, uh, yes, he'll be a little bit disappointed that he didn't manage to get himself, uh, didn't manage to retain his overall lead. But every day that he races, he's learning more. He's learning more about tactics. He's learning more about his body. And he's learning more about the sport of professional cycling. So a big change uh, in the overall standings and uh, Van Garden uh, giving a little bit of a quiet time with the, uh, the team helpers up alongside him. He'll wait and try and he still will be the best young rider in this race and uh, we're getting there. There's the confirmation. So it was in fact only 58 hundredths of a second the time separating Christian Vandervelde from Levi Leipheimer. 
Rafael uh, Infantino, uh, he was uh, four seconds adrift, an incredible ride by him. Looking further down, uh, TJ Van Garder in uh, sixth place, he lost 51 seconds on the day. Dave Zabriskie, uh, seventh place, losing 59 seconds. Cadell Evans, uh, ninth, uh, just ahead of his own teammate, George Hincapie. That's a pretty solid ride for the 38-year-old from Garden BMC Racing, and uh, he lost a minute and 10 seconds.